Welcome to Gate City Chronicles. I'm Kevin Avard, your host, and today uh, my special guests are from Boise State. I have uh, a couple of people, uh, alumni, can I say? Alumni. Uh, Alex, and, and your last name, Alex? Henlin. Henlin and, and Patrick Doolittle. Doolittle. I, I figured I could remember that. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Well, we had a, this is a basic follow-up uh, to our, our recent uh, interview that we had with the uh, Boy State as well. The American Legion, obviously, is one of the, the main sponsor of this. And uh, I, bet, I guess uh, the college here in town... Uh, At Riviere. Riviere College. Riviere, yeah. Is, uh, is where you, you basically do the, the program. That's correct. We've been there for oh, easily over 10 years at this point. They've been fantastic hosts, great location, lovely facility. Excellent. And so you've both been, you're both alumni, and uh, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to start off with Patrick. All right. Patrick, how did you hear about the program? Actually, I uh, heard about the program uh, by doing a different program with the American Legion, which is the uh, Constitutional Oratorical Competition. Um, it's, it's basically a speech competition, and the speeches that, uh, that you say at the contest, uh, you've written previously, prepared about the Constitution, different articles, clauses, amendments. And uh, that was a fantastic competition. I actually uh, won the state competition and got to go to nationals. And then uh, while I was at nationals, I'd he I heard a couple other kids who were older than me. Past summer, they'd done Boy State. A couple months later, and my high school uh, notified me that I've been chosen to go to the program. I didn't know much about it, but um, it, I went in with an open mind. And, right. Yeah. So you didn't know much about it. You just knew it had something to do with government. Not at all. Yeah, I knew. I knew the basic premise of it, but I didn't. I didn't know really the details of the logistics. And uh, I found out once I got there. Right. Yeah. Well, could you um, ask? Tell us a little bit about the program before I ask any more questions. What when they go there, you you have no expectations, mm -hmm. you, other than you're interested in government. Then all of a sudden, you walk it. You walk into Revere College, and well, it's it's an advanced seminar in civics. Um, I should stress at the outset there is a corresponding girl state program that right. the American Legion Auxiliary runs. So all of my comments, although geared to boy state that I'm familiar with, there is a counterpart. Um, that, that should be bought in mind. But put very simply, it's a week of practical and theoretical instruction. Um, we bring in uh, political party speakers, people who talk about municipal government, mayors, uh, state representatives. We bring in the governor. And they talk about how city, town, party, and state government in New Hampshire works from the ground up. And then the students proceed to build it and uh, they run their campaigns, they build their state, they get the state that they want and that they're committed to being a part of. How do they go about building that? Do they all elect officers or, or how, how, I mean, you got raw material. Here's, how many people are usually go? We've um, had as many as 130. We've had as few as 55. We usually wind up with a program of about 70 students. We'd love to have more. We certainly have the space for more. Right. Um, but on day one, they meet each other, and after about two and a half hours, they go and stand for election to city and town office, and it's off to the races. Now, yeah. did, did you, when you went there, you say, well, I want to be mayor, or I want to be a city councilor, or it's I want to be... It's a little more complicated than that. I think you really? can go in with those aspirations, but there's many levels and hoops that you have to jump through before you can just say, oh, I want to run for mayor. One of the interesting things, which I think you touched upon, is... Uh, <laughs> You get there and you have a little pizza, luncheon, kind of welcome. I guess it's more dinner, but um, you meet everybody and you know you say hi, you introduce yourself, you try to make you know find common ground with some people, and then literally two hours later, you're asking them to vote for you um, by making a quick little speech in your towns. And basically, the way that you get to be mayor, if you want to be mayor, is you got to win something at, right off the bat because you got to kind of climb the ladder. Wow, it's it's important when these students arrive right away. Um, we purposely divide them up. So although a school like Pinkerton Academy may send 10 students, we divide them up among the towns and then split them among political parties so that no one really knows anybody else. They may know one or two other faces, but they haven't got any sort of a clue about a student from Hanover or another one from Portsmouth or one from up in Berlin. And these people suddenly are together and have to function. You know, that's for you know, my first day up at the Capitol. I, rem <laughs> I felt that exact same way. Yeah. Uh, I went into this big room, and there were a bunch of people that I didn't know. And right. I, I happened to friend one person. And that one person led to another person and another person. 
But you really are put in that type of an, an environment. Mm. I, I, I imagine on all levels. But uh, was it intimidating? <laughs> it was very intimidating. <laughs> in the beginning, yeah, you don't know, like, uh, how to go about it almost. It's, it was interesting. I remember getting there, putting my stuff down, and going down even just to this pizza, little pizza party that they, that they welcome you with. And not even knowing where to like who to go to or anything. I didn't even have one person. Mm. So to go, you know, just say hi to one person, like you said, you know, your relationship with that person leads to a relationship with another one. Before you know it, you've got kind of maybe a group, and maybe that group hooks up with another group, and that's the way you meet people, and that's what you have to do if you want to win elections. So one of the things that you're not going to see at Boy State is somebody having an inside scoop as what's going on. Never. Pr pretty much. So it's like, like, in my mind, oh yeah, we're at camp. Yeah, listen, you've got to do this. You got to, mm. nothing like that. We're, nobody knows anybody, and you basically help the, the kids get, or the, the young men at that point. Every year is different, yeah. and they all come in, and we sort of, as staff who've been doing this for 5, 10, 15 years, even one year, fresh, fresh back, a good number of our staffers are recent alumni from one, two, three years ago. Uh, they think they know how it's going to turn out, but every group is different. What was the impetus for this whole program? Why, why did this come about? Uh, the American Legion really devised Boys State um, originally as a response to the Hitler Youth Movement in Germany in the run-up to World War II. They really saw um, the spread of fascism as a major threat and wanted to make sure that people in the United States understood and appreciated what democracy meant. and. Um, their original goal was to kind of run it as a classroom. A couple of years in, more students showed up than they could possibly run. And so the idea was born that maybe these students should take it upon themselves to show what citizenship and democracy means and run their own state. And the model has spread through, uh, throughout the United States today. Now, how much does it cost for a, ch a student to go there? It's absolutely free to the student. There is a modest application fee. I think it's about $25. And uh, the rest of it is paid for by the American Legion. One of the, uh, one of the, the statements that really struck me in, in the uh, previous interview that we had, uh, and I'm really glad to have you back because I really believe in this. Thank I you. think this is a great program. Uh, I would like to witness it, maybe uh, put it on the show. I'd be very point. glad to have you. Last week of June at Riviera University. Right. Well, one of the things that we, what struck me was a statement that said that these boys go in as boys and they leave as men within a week's period of time. How can you qualify a statement like that? I think that that statement is 100% accurate, um, mostly because when you, when you go in, uh, everybody kind of comes in with their own political bias, especially in the really heated pol political climate that we have today. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone really associates with one kind of ideology, and anybody who associates with the other one or a different one is just, well, they don't understand, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you do, there are a lot of kids that come in with that, and they you know, you come out having respect for people who you don't necessarily agree with, people with different backgrounds when, uh, than you. And, uh, and I think that respect is a huge part of manhood, respect especially if maybe people that you don't understand or that you don't agree with 100% on. And to me, that's what that statement means. Tell me a little bit about the negotiating that you had to do while you were there. For instance, uh, there would be a particular bill. Uh, was it Democrat, Republican, Independents, uh, Libertarians, it, or was it uh, a fictitious name? It, it's a fictitious name, we try to divorce um, modern day biases from the parties that mm -hmm. we build. So uh, the students when they come in are assigned to political parties to teach them how the, the system works. Uh, the past couple of years we've used nationalists and federalists just oh. as names that we give. That works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. yeah, and then w they, everybody in the party gets together and you actually have to fight and come up with a, a party platform. You really have to negotiate and you have to figure out what it is that you want your party's ideology to be. And this is really difficult because you have kids in one party from, you know, Democrat, Republican, you know, the real parties that we have in this country right now. So you have to, your platform has to consist of things that you can agree on. You kind of have to um, compromise just to form a platform that you're all going to run on, so or the candidates from your party are going to run on. Now, when you went through the comp compromise, mm -hmm. did, did you feel like after a while, you, you know, my gosh, did I just sell my soul or to, to, to get to a certain soul point? Uh, at what point does integrity and compromise have to have to balance each other? I think that 
there's integrity in compromise. So I think that maybe some of the maybe integrity that you feel is lost. Maybe your ideas weren't 100% taken. Maybe what you want is maybe what's there is not 100% what you want. But I think that there is integrity in in just the idea of compromise and the act of compromising with someone. Nobody's asking you to compromise your political principles or maybe just your principles as a, as a person. They just want you to find some common ground. There's common ground everywhere. We, are, we do, after all, all want the same things for this country. We just don't believe and that, how get there. Right, that there's one way to go about them or, or that you know, one way is wrong, one way is right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So. Well, not to put you on the spot, but you, 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 were, uh, you, know, you, you wrote about the Constitution. You had a speech about the mm -hmm, Constitution. Yeah. Was that part of the platform to di discuss in, 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 in making your party platform? Again, I think this was another area where we disagree. You've got a lot of kids who believe that you have to have a broad interpretation of the Constitution. And then you have a lot of kids that believe that a strict interpretation of the Constitution is the only thing that can work for this country. Wow. And so everything in the platform obviously has to be constitutional, so it has to be brought up. And it's the most important document in the history of this country, obviously. So it does have a presence, but at the same time, there are some things that you just have to, you know, put aside, and you have to, you have to look for that common ground. And that common ground necessarily, you know, isn't always found um, in places where you formally disagree. How do you moderate such discussions, or do you? Where do you, you just say do this, and how, how do you get in, interject with? Uh, a final outcome. Usually what you wind up doing, I mean, <clears throat> just the Boys State is divided half and half. You get about 35, 40, 16, 17 year olds trying to come up with how a party works. What do they stand for? What do they believe? And you can get up in the beginning and sort of say, here are the ground rules. Listen to everybody. Uh, majority vote. Maybe you want to have a two-thirds vote if it's something you think is important. Um, say, here's how the process generally works, you know, play it out. Um, and, and usually staff doesn't involve themselves ah. because this is the student's creation. There's a level of moderation if it starts to, you know, really get passionate and, and vigorous, but um, it really is what the boys create. So in the process of creating, there's an end game. Mm -hmm. What is that end game? For instance, you, you've created a government. Uh, you got elected or selected because you sponsored a particular bill. Mm -hmm. You had to fight for that bill. Right. Did you win? <laughs> did I, I? Actually, this is something interesting. My bill passed at Boys Nation and did not pass at Boys State. So even on the bigger kind of level, I think... Uh, All politics is local, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think one thing that was shocking to me, and I think this is very much true in actual government, is um, practicality and just logistically trying to get your bill out onto the floor and trying to convince people just to hear what your bill is all about. There are too many bills, really. Everyone comes with a bill, not everyone gets heard. That's just a reality. You, they try to break us up into little groups so that all can be heard. But I actually think it's better that not all are heard because that's a reality. Not right. every bill is going to have its chance, you know what I mean? So when we're in these little groups, you've got to work with everyone else to say, hey guys, like, can we maybe designate this amount of time at the end just so you guys can hear the premise of my bill? And you have to, it's all about working with people, convincing people just to maybe hear you out is an obstacle. But again, you learn so much from once you surmount that obstacle, or at least in trying to surmount that obstacle, that it's worth it and it's rewarding in the end. I think in New Hampshire, every bill that is submitted actually has to be heard. Does it really? It, it does. You know, one of the things that the program constantly tries to do, it's why we're here in New Hampshire, it's different from what they do in Massachusetts, it's different from what they do in Missouri. Um, this is a program that is designed to reflect and introduce New Hampshire to ourselves. Students come in and sort of have a parochial sense of this is Bedford, and I know Bedford, mm -hmm. and it's really good. Well, have you thought about this, this, and this, which the is Nashua important needs a to Hampstead, <laughs> or Nashua needs a railroad station, or Plastow doesn't want a relay, or Manchester has this issue, and, and suddenly you have to listen and talk. Mm -hmm. And New Hampshire has a House of Representatives of 400 people, and not everyone's going to get heard to as much as they might like. but. What can they do? And, and I think one of the things that you know, Patrick saw last summer that I've seen in 17 years on staff is that realization that this is who we are right. in New Hampshire is, is an incredible thing to watch come over. 
I can't imagine the public schools being able to do this uh, with, with the way that you folks do this. So this has got to be quite the learning experience for mm -hmm. you. It's, it's, very, it's a very different experience. It's nothing like you've ever experienced before because it's, it's basically an intensive simulation of how things actually are. And I think maybe in ways that in ways that aren't even apparent or that can't even be explained in a pamphlet, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, would, I would wonder how the dynamics would change after you've done a week with the boys club and girls did, the, or boy, boys state and the girls did boy, girls state, and then you mix the crowd. There's a huge dynamic <laughs> difference. <laughs> really? Yeah. Because, but after, because I think it I, changes the dynamic in many ways. It really does. Yeah. It, you know, it, it, there's a whole different uh, tech, you know, just there's, they're different. Men and women are different, and mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting. But I think the whole process that you've gone through has got to be uh, quite the eye-opener. I, I know many times when I went to the Capitol, it was, you'd walk out of there and, and you didn't know I hit you. Mm. It's like, did I, did I do the right thing or didn't mm. I do the right thing? Did I compromise or, or didn't I compromise? Was I, you really have to examine yourself mm. yeah. uh, and, and know that you're doing the best you can, especially when there are other factors that you just didn't consider. And I think that's one of the best learning experiences that comes out of the Boys State program. Um, it's that examination and, and thought about how am I going to present myself and what I have to say so that other people will listen and will understand what I have to say and how can I demonstrate a respect and understanding for what others have. Um, using the 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 lessons that, that we teach, how the electoral process works. Sure, it teaches leadership, it teaches how to win elections, it teaches the process. But on a, on a more fundamental level, I think it really does give you a sense of how to present yourself in adult society. Right. I thought, again, reflecting on my experience at the Capitol, I, I thought one of the, the most intriguing thing was sitting with people that we were on the same party but had different views of the same bill and they weren't afraid to tell you the truth about certain things. You can't do that because it doesn't line up with this or you, oh, you know, and you're like, oh, I didn't think of that, you yeah. know? Uh, or or how, how to kill a bill that's a bad bill. Mm. It, just all kinds of interesting things. I wanted to ask you a little bit about your experience versus your experience. You, you're an alumni, you, you, have, have it, has it evolved, has it changed? You know, I went through the program in the summer of 1996 and uh, served as the speaker of our model House of Representatives. I, it's, the process hasn't changed a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, the issues that come up sure are different. Right. Uh, in the mm -hmm. mid-90s, we were more interested in motor voter or uh, some sort of graduated licensing scheme that was then new and different. Uh, it's, it's, the issue sets that get brought up by, by the students that I see today are different from the ones that I would have been concerned about at that age. But uh, we, ha we had a rather lengthy debate last summer about municipal land use law and uh, zoning, uh -huh. uh, which, yeah. which was just not something that I think a lot of students in my age bracket uh, in, in the mid-90s would have thought. But as the program evolved, um, the basic structure remains, but how it is used and how it propagates, uh, it, it's different every year. Mm. It's really neat to see. What were some of the topics that uh, you struggled with? Um, how do you mean struggled? If you're in the legislator, you're struggling with <laughs> um, something. I think... What were, the, what were the, the, the hot, the heated debates? I think the heated debates were the ones, the most heated debates were the ones that people know the most about already coming in. I learned so much. When I went to Boys State, I learned so much about different things going on around the state and different proposals that, like, I don't follow New Hampshire political news as much as I follow, you know. The national. Yeah. The national political news, you know what I mean? So I learned so much, like I learned about the Northern Pass, about all the different things like that. And you know, to me that was more of a learning experience, experience where you bring in something that maybe is you know, under, under state's control but is a, currently a very public, publicized debate in the national political arena, like gay marriage or like um, some kind of uh, legislation, green legislation, going green, things like that. People, People know how to talk about those things. People know the issue, and then it, it can become heated. But at the same time, you you're, you are learning that respect. You're learning 
how to deal with people who disagree with you. So it never gets to the point where it's out of control. You never need moderation. To me, one of the key aspects of this whole program was that the counselors are not really involved. It's really on you. And people, you know, you got to control yourself and you have to control the group. Do you recommend this to everybody? <laughs> I think, yeah, I would give it's it a, a ringing question, endorsement. Right? Yeah. Uh, it really has, um, I think, changed. Not necessarily changed. I think I still wanted to go in this direction, but just solidified everything that you know I want to do. And actually, everything, or you know, the majority of things that I that I know about myself and how I deal with other people. So I would certainly recommend it. So, what kind of vocation do you think you want to go into? Um, well, next year I'm going to college <laughs> to basically go pre-law. I want to go to law school. I want to get involved in all this. This is this program really showed me not only that I'm interested in this, but that I can do it if I want to, and that I can you know, pass a bill or negotiate with people who disagree with me if I put my mind to it. So right. I feel like it prepared me for you know, where I'm headed. Right. And Alex, you're an attorney. I am. I am in private practice in Boston. In Boston. And, and this had an influence, obviously. This was a transformative event. Um, you know, we, we put it on our papers, and, and sometimes people laugh at it, and we call it the week that shapes a lifetime. But it really is, and it does. Uh, students from four years ago write me. They're, they're seniors at Holy Cross or at Yale, and they said, this, this changed my life. This really set me on a path to thinking about public service as uh, something that I should be involved in. Um, and, and I will say, as part of giving back to the community, this is far and away the best thing that I do outside of the office. Absolutely. And yeah. my family. My wife will tell yeah. me if I don't put that in. <laughs> you heard that. <laughs> hey. Hi, Mom. Right. <laughs> do you want to say hi to anybody? Just, yeah. Hi, Mom. There you go. <laughs> you know. there you go. Uh, well, that's, that's fantastic. I, 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 again, when I heard about this program, I think I heard it from uh, another former state rep. I never heard of this. This is a great idea. This is, and it's simple, and, and the price is right, and it's local, and it really helps people get an understanding. One of the things that, uh, I'll close with this, but one of the things that, that troubles me that if you see what's going on and you just back away, then the people that you probably disagree with were going to be in charge of your life. Mm. That's why it's important for people to get involved with their local zoning board, planning board, alderman, city councilor. Otherwise, the people that you don't agree with are going to take the reins. The message we send is that everyone has a role to play, yeah. and you can make a difference by being involved. Right. It's, it's How do people get in touch with the, with, with the Boy State? We have a website, nhboystate.org. You can call the American Legion Department Headquarters in Concord. They'll be happy to send you um, uh, an application packet. Every high school principal and guidance counselor in the state has been sent materials. And uh, our program is the last week of June, starting on the 23rd at Riviera University here in Nashua. So any, any student that wants to get involved, they, they need to go to the principal's office or the guidance counselor and say, listen, I saw this show, or my, your parents. Uh, I'd like to see what this is all about. Absolutely. Now, there is a, a benefit for doing the program at Riviera College, from what I understand. Yeah, actually, you can get uh, three, I believe it's three, three college credits um, just from doing the program, which is, you know, obviously a great opportunity. There's also uh, ample opportunity to win scholarship money, which is helpful, you know, especially, you know, it's juniors that are in this program, so everyone's in the college mindset. Right. And, uh, well, they're going into their senior year, so, um, you know, those, those scholarships are available, and that's a great thing. So this is exclusive to juniors in high school? It doesn't have to, it, it, public school, private school? That's right. Anyone who has one year of high school left uh, is more than welcome. Right. Do you do homeschoolers, too? We do. Uh, they should look at nhboystate.org, and there's a full application pack and information on okay. that. One more time with the website and a phone number if you have it. Uh, nhboystate.org, and I don't have the phone number offhand, <laughs> it's so I won't even try. But it is on the website, yeah. right. and uh, B-O-Y-S-S-T-A-T-E dot org. Is, is there anything else you want to tell our viewers, uh, or did we cover it all? I think, I think we covered it. I'd just like to close with, um, just a statement about how life-changing this experience really is. Mm. I can't recommend it enough. Good. Well, I want to thank you both for coming on the show. Thanks for having us. All right. And uh, best thank wishes. And, and I hope we, uh, we flood it this year, right? Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you for watching Gate City Chronicles. Uh, we're, 
really recommend this program, and we hope that if you have a junior in high school, you know, look, look for uh, the application in, in your school. So until next week, thanks for watching.